And to further digest the global food situation, joining us is Maximo Torero. He's the director of the International Food Policy Research Institute for Markets, Trade and Institutes Division. Thanks for joining us this evening. A pleasure to join you. Well, we saw that world food prices rose in the first quarter of the year for the first time since their all-time high in August of 2012. But now, according to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, prices for the month of July were 1.7% lower than the same time last year. So what are the primary reasons that we're seeing for this decline now? Yeah, we have a significant uh, good supplies uh, this year from the key exporting countries. Uh, if we look at the stocks uh, until July, uh, for example, for we have an increase in more than 2 million metric tons uh, and similar increases in wheat and in soybeans. But these are for the key exporting countries uh, and also the market structure has improved significantly with increase of exports from the southern corn, especially Brazil, Uruguay and Paraguay. The story is very different to what you just show uh, in Central America, which mm -hmm. is a net importing country. No? So, Maximo, at what point will these lower prices trickle down to the consumer? And which geographic locations are most likely to benefit from this? Uh, look, it's important to understand that uh, low prices will uh, benefit consumers, especially from urban areas. But the transmission is pretty small. Just to have an idea, uh, a 1% mm -hmm. increase in the price of, or, or a reduction in 1% in the price of, of wheat uh, will only change 0.02% the price of bread. So the transmission for right. urban consumers is smaller. The major effects uh, on the negative side will be on the other hand on, on, on producers, uh, rural producers. But one point which is important to, to, to raise is the fact that volatility has reduced significantly. Uh, the, the global volatility measure has gone down around 20% and extreme well, what volatility also. do you attribute also. the stability to? Sorry, can well, you? you say volatility has been reduced. What do you attribute this increased stability to? That's good news that prices are more stable across the board. That, well, what a, is the reason behind that? Yeah, exactly. And the reason behind that is that we have increased the diversification of countries exporting. The huge increase in, in exports from Brazil, uh, Paraguay, Uruguay uh, has helped enormously to diversify uh, the supply of the world. And that has helped to reduce uh, volatility. Mm. Well, you know, China's growth and demand from soy to corn to meat has uh, been cited as a major reason for escalating glo global food prices. What role does China play in the price point of global food commodities? So China play a, plays a crucial role because China is one of the biggest importer of food commodities, especially soybeans, uh, corn and, and wheat. So anything that will happen in terms of the local production of China. All what China produces is consumed. But if they have a drought, for example, uh, they will, we will be facing a, a, a demand shock, which will immediately affect prices. So to, to be able to understand this, uh, if we look at the export side, we have around five countries which are the key exporters. Anything that happens in those five countries will automatically affect the global prices. Similarly, in the side of, of imports, demand, uh, China is one of the biggest uh, players in terms of demand. So if anything happens to the production uh, of any of these key commodities in China, automatically they will access through the international market and that will put pressure uh, over the prices. Well, speaking of these key producing countries, Ukraine is known as the breadbasket of Eastern Europe and it's also the world's sixth largest wheat exporter. So how does the situation there now impact food supplies and prices? That's a very important point. If you recall in the 2007-2008 crisis uh, and later in the 2009-2010 because of the fires that happened in, in, in Russia and in Ukraine, there was a shock in terms of, of price increases because they were at that point in time, if I'm not wrong, the fourth uh, biggest exporter in terms of wheat. The story has changed a little bit lately uh, with the en significant entry of Brazil, uh, Uruguay and Paraguay. So although Ukraine is still important, it's not as important as it was uh, in 2007, 2008, 2009. Uh, mm -hmm. And for example, today, uh, the, the problems that they are facing in terms of conflict, although it has reduced the level of exports, uh, that has been clearly overcome by the increase in exports in, 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 in these big countries, uh, Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay. So we don't see yet uh, the effects of that and we are not yet seeing also the effects of, of any ban being imposed by, by Russia at this point. Well, Maximo, is there any geopolitical tension point that you then think may likely cause the most volatility in global food prices? They, they, of course, there will always be uh, potential tensions because still 
the, the structural problems that we face in 207, 208 food price crisis have not been resolved. There has been some improvements, and that's what we are observing today with more diversification, and especially from the southern corn. So the share of global exports from the southern corn has increased. But let's assume, for example, uh, that Brazil and, and Uruguay and Paraguay, Paraguay faces a, a climate shock. Then for sure we will be in the same levels as we were several years ago. So still there is a lot to do. Uh, we have improved, on the other hand, in terms of policies. Uh, there has been a lot of effort to bring evidence uh, to reduce, for example, negative trade policies like export bans or export restrictions. And in that sense, uh, my hope is that it will keep improving. For example, lately India released uh, 5 million metric tons in rice uh, uh, from their own government reserves, which is a, an important uh, event because that has also increased the global supply, which also has resulted in a reduction in the international price All of right. rice. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much for your insight. Maximo Torero, Director of the International Food Policy Research Institute for Markets, Trade and Institutions Division.